forward to answering your questions. Uh, so first, of, I wanted to start with just a little bit of the numbers and where we are right now. Um, if you remember, you know, early on in the pandemic, we didn't have that much access to testing. Um, but over the summer, once we had some more access, we had, uh, we were doing, keeping the positivity rate around 1%. As you can see, um, over the past few months, uh, due to combining structural reasons, the weather, people are gathering indoors more, the holidays, uh, are, we're seeing rates continue to rise, and along with that, hospitalizations. Uh, and we're seeing that continue to rise week over week. Uh, if you see down um, in this four week average, we were at 1000 hospitalizations on average per week. And this past week, we're at 1200. Um, and same thing, uh, sadly, with deaths. So now is more important than ever to talk about uh, test and trace and, and isolating. So first thing I want you all to know is that through New York City Health and Hospitals, testing is at no cost to you. Um, anytime you come to any of our facilities or our partners, you should not be getting a bill for the testing. Uh, there, are, there is some anecdotal evidence that some people have done. Those, those are by mistake and very rare. And if you call the number, uh, if you get a bill from us, we will get that sorted out for you. Um, so first, the testing piece. Um, where can you get tested? So uh, I, I've been told to not to talk too long, so I'm going to be going a little bit quickly here. Um, we have uh, many different ways of getting tested in many different places. We have our permanent sites. We have 11 hospitals and um, over 11, uh, 70 clinics around the city, um, but specifically the, the hospitals can provide testing. We have our pop-up testing sites, which are, of which there are 32 um, all over the city, including some in Mariners Harbor at uh, Vanderbilt, our federally qualified, qualified health center. We have a new one that uh, provides rapid testing at uh, Mount Loretto as well. We also have mobile vans and other forms of mobile testing that um, set up both in Staten Island, but all over the city. Uh, currently, we have 20 teams that provide self-testing stands uh, where you can sort of swab yourself using an at-home testing kit um, provided by the Fulgent um, company. There's also uh, New York City Health, uh, the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene also provides rapid testing at many sites across the city. And of course, we have other partners like City and DN1 Medical who have um, committed to providing accessible and affordable testing to all of the whole city. What kind of tests are available? There's the nasal swab. So I think everyone now knows about the brain tickle test, right? It's those very deep, uh, it can be, can be uncomfortable, um, but we're really at all of our sites, we're doing the na regular nasal swab. So it should be the front of the nose, still a tickle, but not uncomfortable. So definitely know that. There's also the, that's the test that will tell you if you have COVID right now, or more specifically, if you have a, the genes of the COVID-19 of coronavirus in your nose right now. The antibody test, of course, tells you if you've had coronavirus before. Um, and then there's the rapid nasal swab, which is also the front of the nose. And we're increasingly expanding access to rapid testing. So from our existing 32 sites, we're adding rapid testing and many of them up to 17 of them now so that you can go get a nasal swab and get the result within a few hours. How do you find out where to get testing? nyc.gov backslash COVID test is probably the best place. Uh, there's a list of the mobile testing sites, very long list because they're we're expanding that all the time. At the bottom you'll also, there's a cast light mapping tool where you can put in your address, put in your zip code, whatever, an intersection if that's easier, and you'll be able to find the nearest testing site to you. It'll give you the hours, whether it's free, whether they provide antibody testing or rapid testing. There's also testandtrace.nyc, which is specifically for our New York City Health and Hospitals testing sites, and it lists them in sort of text format. It also says if it's a rapid testing site, we're in the middle of adding also the information about whether it provides flu vaccine as well, since we are adding that capability to many of our sites. Um, Mariners Harbor actually is live with that if you are, live in that area. 
it's, that's in, uh, we have a testing center in Mariners Harbor uh, Public Library and they provide COVID-19 testing. And then also we just added uh, access to the flu vaccine there if, if you would like to visit us there. Um, and then if you go to test and trace that NYC, you'll also, there's a button that uh, says waiting times. And we try to report that every two hours updating what the waiting times are at our different testing sites. So you can uh, try to minimize how much time you spend on online. And then of course you can call 311 uh, or our 1-844-NYC for NYC number to get more information. If you are a organization, you do outreach yourself, um, this is a link uh, that I can share later on also that lists all of the testing sites in the borough so that you can hand out flyers, have them available for your clients. Um, I want to provide a little bit of information about tracing. Uh, we're continuing to do that, um, even though we know that there is community transmission, that we're not able to completely contain it with tracing. Tracing will continue to help us prevent the spread by notifying uh, the contacts of confirmed people who test positive uh, to that they should isolate as well, that they should get tested. And we're seeing good response, continue to see good response based when our tracers call. However, we know that there have, have been uh, a fair amount of concern about scammers who pretend to be tracers and ask for information that we wouldn't ask for. So we uh, designed a process also through test and trace that NYC. This is actually, when you go to test and trace that NYC, this grayed out background, that's what that page is. And if you see here, it says click here to validate my tracer. So that way um, you can ask the person on the phone for a code, you can enter that code and then it'll help, it'll say, you know, verify this person is with test and trace core, you can trust them. Um, we still will not be, you know, asking for credit card information. Uh, so definitely don't provide that to anyone. Uh, but at least you'll, you'll know you have someone to trust that you can trust and providing some sometimes what seems like personal information, but I assure you we're only trying to track the virus and make sure we prevent the spread. Another important piece here is, you know, what if we test, if you test positive uh, or if you're a contact and you're not sure you're going to be able to isolate at home because you have multiple family members, maybe you live with someone who's elderly, you're afraid of passing the virus. Certainly there are many things that you could do to isolate at home, try to use a separate bathroom if that's something you have available, wearing a mask at home, um, cleaning surfaces as much as possible. But we also have hotels which are for no cost to you and provide many services so you can get transportation to and from home. So you get, um, when you get to the hotel, there you'll get tested on site, you'll get free Wi-Fi, access to the phone calls, meals every day. If you take medication, you get medications delivered and healthcare services. We have doctors, nurses, and then telepsychiatry of uh, mental health services as well. That's through our hotels. And before you, I wanted to almost show you, but I know we have limited time. There's an awesome video you'll see. It's a very nice hotel. It's not like, you know, uh, uh, well, now I'm afraid of throwing any specific motel chain under the bus, but, uh, it's, it's like an aloft hotel, you know, we're getting, they're really nice facilities. Uh, my, one of my patients went there and loved it. Um, so, you know, don't want you trying to get COVID to, to go get, <laughs> stay at the hotel, but, uh, but just promise you that it, it, they're nice facilities and, and encourage people to take advantage of them. Uh, but we also understand that some people, you know, will just not want to um, go to a hotel to isolate. And so we, endeavor to provide many services, connect people with services so they can isolate at home. So food delivery, um, pet services so that someone can come and walk your dog if that's needed. Um, you know, health, health care as well, of course, medication delivery. Those are all really important um, factors to, to help people isolate at home that we provide. Uh, you also, everyone that also gets a take care package with, with come, with, comes with masks, gloves, you know, personal protective equipment, wipes to keep your home uh, clean and coat the surface is at least COVID free. Um, and sort of related to this, we recognize that the, the ability to isolate whether at home or, you know, it has to do a lot with, you know, 
resources available. So early on, we created a, uh, a core of hundreds of resource navigators that can connect you to resources in your home. Um, so if you are a contact, if you have tested positive in our case and you're getting calls from us, feel free to ask for a resource navigator and they will reach out uh, and try to connect you to any resources, whether it be food, pet care, uh, help with utilities, any number of things. Um, you can also call directly at 212-COVID-19. Uh, you can call that number actually if you need a resource navigator because you're, you've been exposed to the virus and you're a contact or you tested positive, but also if uh, you know, you're interested in the hotels or if you're, this is sort of like our catch all number. If you want to know what the closest testing site is to you, or if you have symptoms and you're concerned, you want to talk to uh, a provider to find out if you should go to the emergency room or if you should see other doctor. So that's sort of a catch all number that I encourage you all to take advantage of. And I will stop there so that we can have time for a Q and A. Thank you so much, Dr. Jimenez. I actually have some questions for you. <laughs> um, oh, and thank you. Thank you again. This is wonderful information to, to have. Um, regarding your catch-all number, and thank you for saying it that way, um, is there language access when you call this uh, COVID-19 number, 212-COVID-19? Yes. Yep. Oh. There should be access. We have, uh, you know, the same language line that's available. Um, at our New York City Health and Hospitals facilities, uh, which provides access to like over 200 languages uh, interpreters in 200 languages is available through this line as well. That's good to know. Um, I, I sit in many meetings, but I don't recall hearing about the at-home services. Um, that that was news to me and I'm, I'm happy to hear it. Uh, again, would you mind just like has how have you seen it work out um or if you can speak to that how it's worked out where people have been able to utilize the at-home access um for quarantining um yeah i think that you know we have they're not de novo like or uh, resources that we're providing we are making sure people are connected to existing resources although in some cases we did for example I think with pet care, for example, we had to develop a partnership with, uh, I believe it was WAG uh, or another pet care company to help make, to connect people with services for this purpose. Um, but in general, in, in many of the other sort of dimensions of need, we're connecting people with existing resources in their community. And we just have really consolidated work with experts in social services across the city to make sure we're providing people with everything, uh, anything that's available to them. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful to hear, especially the uh, being able to connect to local resources. I know that's a, one of the big parts of, of doing this um, uh, test and trace and being part of the mm -hmm. core as the center being a, a part of this work as well. We recognize that people are looking to get care or are hesitant to come for care or to find out more because it's, you know, I don't know you and we're trying mm -hmm. very hard to make sure they know they're still connected this way. So this will be wonderful to um, highlight and share uh, amongst all of our communities. Um, I think I have one more, but I, I see that you have the holiday recommendations. Oh, in calling that uh, catch all number and it's kind of to tie into next month's uh, town hall, the vaccine conversation is probably the biggest piece of questions that you guys are <laughs> experiencing having right now. Right now, would people call this COVID-19 COVID number to ask those types of questions or to get information on the vaccine as well? Or is this something that is getting onboarded and rolling out? I think, yeah, I don't think we're quite um, there yet uh, with respect to COVID-19 vaccine, especially because you know, the, vi the vaccine that will be deployed in the coming weeks. And the, you're right, everything is moving very quickly as it should be, uh, but will be mostly for uh, people living in congregate settings that are elderly and at increased risk of severe illness, um, and then also healthcare workers. Uh, so that, that'll be really the, I think the priority of the 170,000 doses that uh, we've received uh, just today, I think <laughs> they arrived. So, um, but I think I, it'll be, I wouldn't be, you know, I think by the time we speak next, uh, we'll be, we'll be ready. Yeah. 
to answer those questions and um, and speak more broadly about what the plans are for um, for providers. Now we will be for like your you know local primary care physician. Um, I think one one important piece to highlight here is you know something I think I'm thinking about as you know, I, I work in, in part with NYC Care, which is a program that provides access to healthcare services to anyone, regardless of immigration status. Uh, I would highlight New York City Health and Hospitals here. We know that, you know, people who have a primary care doctor are gonna go to the primary care doctor and they're gonna be signing up to get the, you know, doses of the vaccine. And that's important, that's great. Uh, but just thinking about people who don't, have a regular doctor, just know that you can come to us. New York City Health and Hospitals is the public hospital system. We serve everyone no matter what, no matter if you can pay or no matter immigration status, uh, you can come see us and, and we'll make sure that once the vaccine is available to the general population or even high risk populations, you can come see us to, to get it. Thank you. I do have a question. Um, from one of our attendees and it's asking, how many Staten Island residents have been sent to the Aloff Hotel? How reasonable is that for Staten Island residences? Um, sometimes things get localized more in the city or Brooklyn in the city, uh, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So uh, Staten Islanders are always questioning like, is it mm -hmm. conducive to my need? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, I think, you know, it's, the point of the hotel is there to be isolation. We recognize that the distance seems uh, separate, but that's why we, we really prioritize the um, the free transportation because you know whether you're living in Riverdale and need to isolate or in the far Rockaway or in Tottenville, we want you to be able to isolate. So, um, so yeah, we are expanding as we um, are seeing increasing demand for um, the hoteling services. We have expanded in a hotel, I believe in Brooklyn, and I think another one in Manhattan. So there may be one in line to Staten Island, but I think the key thing to emphasize in, in that respect is that the transportation is we expect absolutely. Uh, will anywhere in the city will get you to where the hotel um, is. Okay. And uh, the other question that came up was, uh, where is the public hospital on Staten Island? Uh, for anyone who may not be aware, uh, there's so or there, or the or the, the nearest for Staten Island, excuse me. Um, so there is the federally qualified health center it's called, uh, on Vanderbilt. Um, I can send you all the address. I don't know it off the top of my head, but um, and there are also many testing sites that are established also in Staten Island uh, of the there's some there's the one I can remember off the top of my head because it's a solid name is Mariners Harbor Public Library uh, but there's also one in Cleveland Place um, we also have like I said the one in Mount Loretta where we partnered with Catholic Charities to provide uh, regular PCR testing but also rapid testing there as well um, and then we have changing sites that through our mobile vans and self-test stands that are all over um, the island. Actually, there's a new one, there's a relatively new one, um, which I totally forgot, and it's very convenient at, uh, at the ferry terminal. And that actually provides PCR testing, but also rapid testing, so. Thank you. And, oh. I was about to get released to you, but I see one more question uh, or two questions have come in. Um, is housing limited? Is there a max capacity that this program is able to service? This is for the hotels? Yes. Um, there is not. Um, basically, as we're seeing the, the usage go up, because there is a higher demand, as we're seeing, unfortunately, increased cases, we're literally looking for more hotels. We're going to continue to expand to accommodate whatever demand there is, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're answering all these wonderful questions and thank you all for providing these questions. They're really uh, helpful in informing us. Um, some things you know, some things you may not know. So it's, thank you, Dr. Jimenez for um, enlightening us with the information. Um, I, I now see that you would go into holiday recommendations. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, yeah, I can say, you know, two seconds about this. I think this, you've probably heard this before. And I think the main thing is um, 
you know, stay home uh, and really only gather with your household. I've personally, I've heard many, uh, I think there's some confusion around what a bubble means. Uh, I know that I've seen many, many of friends say, I'm in a bubble with this friend and I'm in a bubble with this friend, I'm in a bubble with that friend. Um, and I think, you know, the point of the bubble is that if you did choose to do that, is that you are, you, both of those people in the bubble or households in the bubble are only seeing people in that, in that group so that you create a, you know, fake household, if you will. Uh, so that's what, I, what we mean by, you know, gather only in your household because otherwise you're really running the chance of spread. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that most of the spread right now is through households and there is some uh, through indoor dining, but it's through households. So anytime that you are taking your mask off and chatting it up with someone at a, a distance of less than six feet, it um, that's that's when you're running the risk. And sadly, you know, we're I'm seeing this at our testing sites currently. Um, we think we can tell who's positive, right? And there's like a there's something about you know. Oh, but but he's my brother, you know. Like he can't, you know, uh, he can't give it to me. And fortunately, this is exactly how it's happening. Whenever we let our guard down and hang out with friends and family, that's when we're transmitting the virus. Uh, so to protect your family, to protect your loved ones, we ask that you only gather within your household. And if you absolutely must must gather uh, in between households, that you wear a mask, you uh, keep the six feet distance at all time if at all possible, gather outdoors. Um, although not tomorrow, obviously, because <laughs> tons of snow. Um, but, uh, but also, you know, you can also increase ventilation by opening windows to the extent possible. Um, there are many things you can do. I know the Department of Health website has more, even more guidance than the slide uh, to try and reduce the risk. Um, but those are the recommendations. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and yes, I would love to just take an opportunity to be able to tell you um, a little bit more about the services that the Counseling Services Program at the Pride Center of Staten Island uh, provides. Um, so uh, as mentioned earlier, we provide individual, couples, family, and group counseling. Um, and all of these services are free. Um, and so if you are interested in signing up for services, you would just ha simply have to visit our website um, and uh, you could submit your information or loved one's uh, information uh, in order to sign up. So now I'm going to take an opportunity to talk a little bit more specifically about some of the groups uh, that we provide at the Pride Center. Um, so our first one we have is G-SPEC, which is short for Gender Spectrum. And so this one is actually being revived and actually will be starting uh, tomorrow, uh, December 15th. And that will be meeting weekly on Tuesdays between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. Um, it's open to any youth between the ages of 12 to 17. Uh, and essentially what this space is for is to provide a brave space for youth across the gender spectrum to have facilitated discussion on topics relating back to TGNC related topics and the intersectionality of the youth experience. So this can look like coming out to family, friends, um, navigating being out at school, identity development, and uh, so much more. Next up, we have transcendence. Um, and just a little, um, factoid. Uh, this logo here was actually designed by one of our participants, um, and so I always like to uh, emphasize that because it is very um, client-based and, you know, they contribute uh, just as much as, you know, my staff does uh, to it. So um, that's always something very special to shout out. Um, so this group meets weekly on Fridays between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Um, it's open to individuals 18 and over who identify anywhere, again, along the TGNC spectrum. Um, and this space is designated to provide a brave space for TGNC folks to have coordinated discussion on TGNC-related topics, again, in an open environment. Um, so this can look like TGNC representation in the media, 
uh, social transitioning, transitioning in the workplace, and again, uh, there's so much more. Next up, we have the bereavement group. So something that I love about the Pride Center of Staten Island is that we're able to accommodate uh, the needs of the community as they uh, are presented to us. In this very difficult time of navigating um, you know, the quarantine and you know, COVID-19, something that uh, arose was the need for a bereavement group. Um, this group will be continuing throughout uh, the rest of this year um, and uh, partially into the beginning of next year. Um, right now, this group meets weekly on Fridays between 6 and 7.30 p.m. It is open to any LGBTQ individual 18 and over who has experienced uh, loss or to anyone who has lost someone LGBTQ identifying. Um, and the, gr the purpose of this group is to provide a brave space for individuals to ex uh, express their grief and process their loss in an empathizing space. Um, and this group can range from open discussion uh, and then facilitated uh, activities as well. Next up, we have one of our newer groups that just began earlier this month, uh, the Decolonization Collective. So this group will be meeting bi-weekly on Tuesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, this group exists to bring together LGBTQIA plus people of color to create, hold space, and find solace within themselves and each other. Uh, so this group focuses on the pillars of education, activism, and livelihood mental health, allyship, and brave space. Next up, we have another group that just began earlier this month, uh, the Female Empowerment Group. Uh, so the purpose of this uh, group is to promote a brave space and sense of intersectional female empowerment for female identifying individuals between the ages of 25 to 59 within the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, and so this group will meet bi-weekly on Saturday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. So Families in Transition is a group that is um, heavily kind of based in the ally uh, aspect of uh, the services that we provide to the allies of folks within of the LGBTQ or TGNC experience. Um, so this group meets bi-weekly on Thursdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. It is open to family members and friends of TGNC identifying individuals. Um, and so the purpose of this space is to provide a brave space to friends and family members of TGNC folks to help them navigate through the, their own emotional experience uh, as their loved one navigates the process of transitioning and uh, existing as a TGNC identifying uh, person. Um, and I'm excited that this group is co-facilitated by a person of that lived experience, another a parent of a trans man. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a very unique group. And uh, yeah. Next up, we have the trans male group. Uh, this group occurs bi-weekly on Saturday afternoons between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, it's open to transgender male identifying individuals 18 and over. And so the purpose of this group is to provide a brave space to transgender male identifying individuals to discuss topics rele relevant to the transgender male community and their experience. Um, so this can look like accessing hormone replacement therapy, navigating top surgery, uh, navigating healthy relationships, uh, and so much more. One of the newest additions that we have at the Pride Center is uh, Spiritual Pride. Um, spiritual Pride is an open space where uh, we affirm and celebrate the divine spirit in each uh, of us as members of the LGBTQ community. Spiritual Pride is where... <laughs> I'm sorry. A spiritual Pride is where you can fully be seen and loved. Uh, our motto and framework lives up the affirmation to love one another. And so this group meets the second and fourth Sunday of every month. Uh, and those meetings are accessible via Zoom. 
Um, and just to personally, you know, add, you know, this group is, you know, really quite something unique and uh, special. So um, it is, you know, something really uh, helpful at a time when, you know, resources are, you know, limited and, you know, support can be, you know, a, a difficult thing to find. So uh, this group is definitely a place to find uh, just that. And finally, you know, in terms of, you know, figuring out a way to manage uh, mental health as we're navigating through the holidays right now, um, and just to make sure that we're taking an opportunity to check in with ourselves, um, here are just a few, you know, hints as far as, you know, how you can, uh, you know, navigate your way through that. So, you know, one of the first things is to acknowledge your feelings. If someone close to you has recently died or, you know, it's difficult to be able to not be with the ones that, you know, you love and hold dear to you um, as a result of, you know, quarantining, um, there's a sadness and uh, grief that comes with that experience. And it's okay to take your time to feel that and express it in whatever way feels most comfortable for you, whether that's uh, crying or um, vocalizing your frustration to, you know, somebody. Um, you can't force yourself to be happy just because it's the holiday season. You know, things are uh, a little different right now, so it's okay to take time to process that. Um, the next up, we have, you know, reach out. You know, if you feel lonely or isolated, you know, seek out community, uh, religious or spiritual um, or other social events or communities that are accessible right now. Um, many may have websites, online support groups, uh, social media sites, or virtual events such as this, um, and they can offer support and companionship at a difficult time. Um, taking a breather is important. You know, sometimes it's something uh, so simple, but, you know, sometimes we have to remind ourselves to follow through with it. Um, so make some time for yourself, you know, find, find an activity that you genuinely enjoy doing, um, take a break by yourself, spend, even if it's just 15 minutes alone, um, without distractions, you know, can really make a difference. Um, find something that reduces stress, uh, by clearing your mind, slow, slowing your breathing, um, or just restoring your inner calm. Um, lastly, you know, one of the most important things that you can do is to seek professional help if you need it. Um, despite your best efforts, you may find that feeling persistently sad um, or anxious or any emotional experience um, plagued by physical complaints, unable, being unable to sleep or just feeling irritable or hopeless. Um, if any of these experiences last for uh, an extended period of time, you know, one of the most important things that you can do uh, is to reach out for support. Um, and in the next slide, you know, I'm gonna give some resources that may be able to help you with just that. So these are some resources that I find extremely helpful. Um, the first one is NYC Well, which is a 24 seven crisis suicide um, information and referral hotline for New York City, New York City residents uh, of any age. So uh, you can call it at any time. And what's also great about is about it is that it's it's, it's accessible via phone call, text, or chat. Um, and so it's help is just a click away. Um, and they can also connect you to. Re mental health resources within your area. Um, so that's something uh, great that's uh, always accessible. The Trevor Lifeline is an LGBTQ uh, youth service, um, but they are trained in being able to, again, help and navigate through crisis and suicide uh, types of situations. So I always uh, find that that's an incredible resource to utilize whenever that's needed as well. Um, and in addition to that, we also have NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And uh, the link that I have attached uh, atta is uh, utilizable to be able to find uh, mental health resources and family uh, support groups within your area. 
Um, so again, any of these resources will be able to connect you to the support that you might need uh, navigating through the holiday season. And again, uh, this is just some of the, uh, this is my personal contact information. Um, and again, the online form submission link to be able to sign up for services. Um, and in addition to that, the contact information for my incredible colleagues, Asia and Arthur, uh, who are our education and outreach manager and community educator. Thank you so much, Tommy. I really appreciate you giving us the full uh, breadth of services that are provided, especially from our counseling side at the Price Center of Staten Island. Um, I had a question that I noted on the bereavement side of the uh, bereavement group. Uh, actually, I have two. One, uh, is there a set uh, age that we tend to skew with, or are there separate groups for different ages if they come up? Right now, we do uh, provide services for those 18 and over. If we find that there is an overlap of folks that are interested that are from the youth demographic, then that is something that we could potentially uh, create if the uh, need presents itself in terms of folks that reach out to us. And when, in regards to the holiday, uh, holiday time, and I know this is not, the bereavement group is ongoing um, with you specifically um, at the Pride Center. Uh, has there been a shift or an uptick of people attending that are speaking more specific to the pandemic or what has occurred from the pandemic? Or are we still looking and seeing people coming for more holiday season time related um, bereavement? Um, in terms of the support, participants, that support. Have, <laughs> right. Uh, in terms of the uh, participants that have been utilizing services right now, it has been a sort of mixture of both. Um, so there has been a little bit of a discussion as far as those who have been impacted specifically by COVID. Um, but there are also individuals who have been coming forward that are just still continuing to navigate the bereavement process wherever they are uh, within that process. Mm -hmm. um, because I kind of contextualize it as this process that's um, ongoing and sort of just, ne and, you know, never ending in a way. Um, so uh, it's, it's a mixture of both. Holiday gatherings during COVID-19 has been a challenge this season, but by reducing the spread, we are making it safer for all of us to have a better holiday season to gather again next year. The safest way to celebrate in the winter holidays is to celebrate at home with the people you live with. Staying home is the best way to protect yourself and others. Travel and gatherings with family and friends who do not live with you can increase your chances of getting or spreading COVID-19 or the flu. For additional information, please visit regularly cdc.gov or nychealthandhospitals.org slash tests n dash trace. When focusing on the holidays, we need to make sure that we're doing the core four plus. In order to do that, we would prepare ourselves to gather as a guest or to gather, have people gather with us as a host. If you're not gonna stay home, you wanna make sure that you're following the protocols and safety guidelines currently laid out. You would also want to test, test for COVID-19. If you need a location, you can always go to nychealthandhospitals.org slash test and trace, and they will give you local information as well as information on how to, uh, how long the wait is, online for certain locations. They also provide uh, language support. Uh, it will show where there are areas that will speak different languages outside of English. You should also make sure that you are being sure to be socially distanced at all times and it, when all possible. You wanna make sure you wear your mask indoors as well as outdoors. During the cold weather, you'd want to wear your mask underneath your scarf, ski mask, or baklava. 
and keep a spare mask in case your mask becomes wet from moisture from your breathing or from snow or rain. You also wanna make sure we're staying socially distanced. Six feet apart is always important outdoors and especially indoors. You do not wanna to have too many people gathered in one place. And remember people without symptoms or a recent negative test result can still spread COVID-19. When you are gathering, try to avoid places that have poor ventilation. You want to avoid crowds, indoors especially, that does not have good ventilation. If you are indoors or you're gathering people indoors, minimize the number of guests and make sure that you can open windows as well as doors. You may also wanna put a window fan that exhausts the air and pulls air through your home so that fresh air can be pulled into your home from the other open windows. I also wanna make sure that we're still washing our hands on a regular basis and when water, soap and water are not available, using a hand sanitizer. And again, testing is important, but also getting your flu shot. It will help tremendously in keeping the rates at the hospitals low and making sure that our healthcare professionals can give the immediate attention and care to those in greatest need. So we can support by reducing the outbreak of flu and the spreading of COVID-19. Alternative ways of celebrating. There are many, most of us have already gone through the first part of the holiday season um, with meeting virtually with family and friends. At tiny.cc slash PCSI resources, you can find a number of resources that were pulled together that gives virtual opportunities and resources to use for free, as well as alternatives for video conferencing. You can do a uh, traditional telephonic or using the telephone conferencing uh, to reach out to loved ones. Our resource page also includes ideas for our being able to connect to our senior population or your older population of your family and friends who may have um, dementia, and would need a little additional care when trying to reach out to them over the holiday season in this virtual space and time. So please visit tiny.cc slash PCSI resources for more information beyond video, beyond telephone. You also, if you're going to meet virtually, prepare people to meet at a particular time on the video call. You can also set up for it to be a time to open one or two gifts or all the gifts. You can set it up to be a time that everyone starts to decorate um, an ugly mask uh, contest or an ugly sweater contest to show off what they're wearing. Uh, you can show off the decorations in your home with different photos. Uh, a lot of people have become more adept in using the free resources online to create slideshows and do presentations with their families. They share their screen and do it that way, or they send it virtually via email, or they send it as a text and then have a conversation over the phone and reviewing some of these things. Again, you can visit our resource page at tiny.cc slash PCSI resources to get more information and ideas. Being safe for this holiday season, some people will need to travel. And if you do need to travel, please, please, please make sure that you're checking what the travel restrictions are currently as prescribed by the CDC or your local government. You make sure that if you do travel, again, we cannot stress enough, please make sure that you get your flu shot before you travel. Always wear a mask in public and on your public, on whatever form of transportation that you're using. Keep your six feet apart, social distancing. One of the main tenets I use is to put my arms straight out and hopefully I'm not touching anyone. That should be far enough. Personal space. Consider getting a viral test. Uh, get your COVID test one to three days before you travel or one to three days before you are traveling into someone's home, as well as three to five days afterwards. That time frame is important um, because you want to make sure you reduce the spread. Reduce non-essential activities for seven days after your travel, even if you test negative within that window of time. And if you are unable to get tested, consider reducing your non-essential activities for 10 days. And again, you can always visit nychealthandhospitals.org slash test and trace, and you can find uh, local testing sites 
and there are no cost testing locations. The COVID testing sites right now are also offering no cost flu shots. If you are going to be the host, please again, remember try to have a limited number of people, especially that are not part of your immediate home or your pod. Have conversations with your guests ahead of time to set those expectations. This is a time that it is not about the politeness, it is about the being informed. So please make sure that you're reaching out to everyone and you're letting them know what your requirements are for coming into your home to have a safe and wonderful holidays, holiday gathering. Do your best if you are able to have a small outdoor celebration, weather permitting, and if weather is not permitting, then make sure that your clothing is weather permitting. Again, keep your windows and doors open and then put a window fan if possible to exhaust air and pull fresh air into your home. Have extra unused masks available for your guests and encourage everyone to wear them inside and out. When it is time to eat or drink, that will be a time to be very mindful of your social distancing. Put those arms out and make sure that you are being mindful of each other. And make sure to clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces and items between use. When it comes to food and drink, although the CDC states that currently there is no evidence to suggest that handling food or eating is associated with directly spreading COVID-19, it is possible that a person can get COVID-19 by touching a surface or object, including food, food packaging, or utensils that have the virus on it, and then touching their own mouth, nose, or possibly their eyes. This is something that we definitely want to avoid when visiting with our family and friends. Some things that you can keep in mind as a guest would be to bring your own food, drinks, plates, cups, or utensils. Um, avoid going in and out of uh, food prep areas or where food is being served. If you are the host, be mindful that you may designate one or two people that will be the servers of the food to again minimize the number of times, another number of contact to communal utensils. Also, as a, as a guest or as a host, you might consider bringing single-use options like salad dressing, condiment packets, disposable items such as food containers, plates, and other utensils. And when possible, use an open or touchless garbage can in recycling area. Again, if celebrating indoors, bring in fresh air. If you're possible to gather outdoors, then gather outside weather permitting and weather permitted clothing. Have a separate space for guests to wash their hands and provide hand sanitizer. Keep background music low. I know it doesn't sound like the norm, but when we talk, we expound, we express, and we get loud. So if we keep the volume low on the music that's playing in the background, it would help to make sure our guests are not needing to shout at each other. Cancel your gathering if you or someone who lives with you is sick or has been near someone who thinks they have, have or has had COVID-19 within 14 days. This is something that is very important. As much as we all would like to be together and gather together this holiday season, this is a year that we would definitely want to use our best judgment and have restraint so that we can gather and be together next holiday season which is very, very promising. So if we only have to do this season, I will give it to be able to be with many seasons ahead with my family and friends. So if you happen to get sick, if someone in your home gets sick, if you think you are near someone who has been sick or tested positive, please, please stay home. And host, it is okay if you decide at the, at, at the 11th hour to postpone or cancel your gathering. Do what is best for you, your family, friends, loved ones. Again, one season, let's give it this season so that we can have many more ahead. And overall, I do not say any of this as though it is easy. Please know that you are not alone. We are all going through this together. And it is important for everyone to know to ask for help. By visiting nycwell.cityofnewyork.com, US, you can go to their website and you can be able to access a lot of information that will give you help on mental health and in ways of coping, wellness, 
crisis intervention, a myriad of support systems that are available through NYC Well. Not only through their website, you can reach them by the telephone, text, or chat 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Their contact information is also on our resource page, tiny.cc slash PCSI resources. You can reach them by phone at 1888-NYC-WELL. That's 1-888-692-9355. You can also text WELL, W-E-L-L, to 65173. And again, for more information on the latest resources and information, you can always go to cdc.gov or for testing locations, flu, vac flu, flu vaccines, you can go to nychealthandhospitals.org slash test and trace. Pride Center of Staten Island will be holding monthly town halls. Our next one will be Monday, January 11th, 2021 at 7 p.m. And our focus and topic with our guest speakers will be vaccine update with Q&A. We will be talking about at that time, the latest information that is available on the COVID crisis, as well as the vaccine and where we are, especially as a nation and as New York City. So please go to tiny.cc slash PCSI town hall and register for our next town hall on January 11th at 7 p.m. At that registration, you may also prepare and see our schedule for future dates, as well as ask questions to prepare to give to our guest speakers ahead of time so they'll be prepared with some of the questions that you may already have in mind. Thank you for joining us. For further information, you can always visit the Pride Center of Staten Island at pridecentersi.org slash COVID-19 or pridecentersi.org slash town dash hall. And again, our holiday resources of ideas and information in one sheet for all contacts that you can need, please visit tiny.cc slash PCSI resources. Thank you, and we hope that you have a wonderful, safe holiday season ahead.